And welcome to Patriots the Men. For the next hour, we are going to be talking about freedom, liberty, what it means to be a free person in the United States of America in terms of your responsibilities as well as your rights. I'm Steve Floyd, the man behind the machine here. Joining me in the studio, we have uh, Joshua Bennett today from Bighorn Enterprises and Aaron Bennett from Far North Tactical. And uh, we're going to be talking about the issues of the day. If there's something on your mind, feel free to call in 458-TALK, 458-8255. You can also join us in the chat room, kfar660.com on the World Wide Web. Gentlemen, good morning. Good morning, Steve. Good morning, Steve. Well, uh, what's the big topic today? I mean, obviously, we're, we've got the municipal elections on Tuesday, and both of you are running for borough assembly. Uh, is there anything else you'd like to talk about besides the borough elections today? I wanted to, uh, thinking about something from a couple of weeks ago when Randy called, he asked about affirmative action laws and uh, discrimination laws in the workforce. And uh, I've been pondering such things the last couple of weeks, and it had a little thought on it. When we force someone, when the government forces someone to hire someone else, an employee, and they force them to based on their race, religion, creed, whatever that is, and I do not believe that it's right to um, be against someone just because of anything, just because of their race, their color, whatever. That's not right. But if we force someone to hire someone based just because, let's, I'm going to give a little analogy. Say you have Mr. Employer, Mr. Bossman, who owns a widget factory, and he hates purple people. Well, the law says that that employer, the Bossman, has to hire purple people whether he hates them or not. So purple person number one, this purple man comes in and says, I would like to have a job. Now, with the anti-discrimination laws, the Bossman, even though he hates purple people, has to hire him. Well, let's say that this purple guy has the greatest idea for the next widget, which will whoever he goes to is going to make him a bazillionaire. So what we've done when we force this guy to hire the purple man, we just rewarded him for his bigotry. Because now the purple man comes in with his widget, and of course he's going to give the idea to, the, to his boss, and his boss is going to take the idea and make the billions of dollars. So we just award, rewarded bigotry. Now, is the guy that hates the purple man, even though he just made him a million dollars, is he going to reward him? No, he still hates purple people. So he's going to take the reward that he, he's going to take the widget, and make the billions of dollars off of it, or however much money. It's just hypothetical. Make the money off of it, and the man that had the idea in the first place will get nothing for it. In fact, he'll be miserable all the time because his workplace is going to be one that. His boss, who hates him, makes him miserable because he wants him to leave. Whether it benefited him or not, his hatred's bigger than his benefit. So, now, if we go the other way, and so all we've done with that, the purple man isn't rewarded at all. He got a job. Big deal. The bigot was just rewarded. We rewarded him for being a bigot by forcing him to hire this guy. Now, if we let people just do what they want, the bigot would go out of business because the purple guy would go to somewhere else and he would go to a man that says, because the bigot would say, I'm not going to hire you. You're purple. Get out of here. So he goes to someone else who's not a bigot and he says, I'm going to hire you because of your merit. So the purple guy says, by the way, I have this idea for a widget. So that man gets the idea for a widget and his company becomes rich. Now, that man, because he's a free market man, he's not bigoted at all, says, I need to keep this purple guy. So he's going to reward him with bonuses, monies, cars, whatever he needs to do to keep purple guy working for him. So what we've done is now the man that's not a bigot is rewarded, the purple guy is rewarded, and the bigot who didn't get the widget goes out of business. That's my problem with discrimination laws. In a sense, that you could almost argue that discrimination laws actually perpetuate discrimination because they presume that a person, that say a purple person, could not possibly get a job on their own unless they had the help to get one. Right. That's exactly right. I mean, you could use that same argument for all the blocking on the free market. Yes, I'm just using one argument for the moment. But it, it, it is true, though. I mean, that, that is any interference in the free market coming by political force... It's going to basically hinder 
the, the free market from doing what it does. And it is going to perpetuate some people getting making money that really shouldn't be making money and other people not making money who should be getting rich. It's uh, it's the market at its basic. It's um, You're rewarded for what you who you are, what you bring to whatever company you're working for, whatever industry you're in, instead of, I mean, in my opinion, the other way, in the little analogy I gave, rewards the bigot. We as a society reward the bigot when we do that because we force him to go against what he believes. He may be wrong. He is wrong, absolutely. But he benefits by us forcing him to hire that man. When it's, I think it's better off for the purple guy to go somewhere where he's respected, where he's wanted. And then when you feel that way, and like I said, he's going to get bonuses. He's going to get more and more. I mean, he might even be the vice president of the company by next year because the man that hired him, who's not a bigot, sees him for his merit and not, I was forced to hire him. No, I, I see what you're saying, but let me, let me just paint this one hypothetical and then we can move on. I, it, if you had a a place that is say Fairbanks where purple people generally were in short supply and generally speaking purple people were not tolerated in the uh, the public square and what if there were no jobs to be had by purple people would such a law an anti-discrimination law at that point be necessary would it be justified I don't know that they would uh, I mean the scenario wouldn't change would it well, if, if there's nobody that would hire a purple person at all because they're purple. Yeah, but in, in, a, in a free market, that's not even possible. Why would anybody cut their own arm off because of somebody's purpleness? Yeah, I mean, that's an ultimate hypothetical, but I don't think it's reality. So basically what you're Neither saying is that purple a, people, a, a, but, both, yeah, that's true. Yeah, uh, however, think... purple people eaters are real. <laughs> I've seen them. Uh, let, me, let me just throw this out, though, that uh, in terms of uh, historically speaking, what you're saying that when you see racism entering in and people discriminating that that is not, that is not a, truly a free market anymore correct okay so any anything that enters in and prevents someone from being hired or prevents someone from going to work is interference in the free market whether it is coming from a government or whether it's coming from a cultural norm yep all right good enough i can accept that uh you know it, really all politics is force and a lot of the, some people kind of lose track of that. But whether you have a lawmaker propose a law uh, that say bans cell phones, or whether you have a uh, a local person who gets a bunch of people to sign a signature that says, "Hey, we should ban wood stoves," uh, really, what it comes down to is that the politics behind it, the, the way to enforce it, it, it's it's wrapped up in that word itself, enforce. You have to you have to go out there and force someone to do what they would not otherwise do on their own. What's it, sorry? I thought you paused. No, well, no, no. Go, uh, I, I'm just I, I'm 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 pointing that out that as you know whether we're talking about and something like an anti discrimination law, or whether you're talking about some kind of uh, heavy handed approach to trying to make us change our behavior and how we heat our homes, that all of it comes down to force. We've actually heard people, um, some people don't really care about that. And some people like that use of force. We've heard in a few of the forums, it's boggled my mind, it's actually come up, came up. And one of them, I don't remember the exact quote that he said, I'm not going to say his name anyways, but the thing was, well, you know, this way we, we passed the law, that way we got the rule of force to be able to back it up. Like, wow, Really? And the last one we went to, someone said, well, you know, I think it's good for the government to dangle carrots out for people, you know, to get them to do what they want. But they also need to have the stick to force them to do what they need to do. And was this a Democrat forum that you went to? No. Was it another political party? Yes. But it wasn't necessarily that political party that was saying that. Now, I'm, like I said, I'm not going to say who the person was or anything because I don't care about that part in particular. What I'm saying is that there are people out there who are more than willing and gladly will force you to do what they think that you ought to be doing, who will gladly use force against you, who see nothing wrong with force being used against you. The same ones that love peace, mm -hmm. as long as it's their peace, would we like to force you. Just like I heard on your radio station, the guys said, oh, yeah, well, the military's right across the road there. You think they won't use them? Really? You really believe that? I mean, do you have a problem with that?
<laughs> they'll use the military against us. They'll use, I don't, I just, there's something wrong with that, that we're so readily in our mind. It's so easy in our minds to think that, yeah, they'll use force against us. Oh, well, we're, really? Who's, where's the peace coming from that? You know, Mr. Dukes is getting hammered for that little logo or whatever, vote from the vote rooftop. From the when all else fails, vote from the rooftops, whatever. Ah, big deal. I mean, that thing means, to me, doesn't mean a whole lot at all. And I don't think that he takes it real seriously either. I mean, the fact of the matter is we did have a revolution. That's why all of us are here right now, 200 and some odd years ago. But the same people that have been hammering him for that, hammering people that like the right to keep and bear arms, that believe in that right, that don't believe the right came from the Second Amendment. It was endowed to us by our Creator. It was put in the Bill of Rights. Patrick Henry, he was uh, adamant that those things, that our Bill of Rights were put together. Um, Virginia had a Bill of Rights, and Patrick Henry said, we have to have these Bill of Rights not to give us these rights. He said, but if we don't have this Bill of Rights, then the federal government, all governments will assume that they now acquire them and we give them up. But the same people that are against the Second Amendment, our right to keep and bear arms, our right to self-preservation, basically what it comes down to, are the same ones that like to use force, government force, government power. And I think the people, for the most part, people that are Second <laughs> Amendment folks are pretty peaceful people, for the most part, because they know that their neighbor has a gun and their other neighbor has a gun, and it keeps people peaceful. An armed society is a polite society. Quite and so. if you don't have one, you can always go to a foreign attack. There you go, <laughs> exactly. Uh, you know, I anything that's peaceful, is a, it's a book that I'm, I'm reading right now by Leonard Reed, and he talks an awful lot about the free market. He talks an awful lot about government intrusion into daily life. And that underlying principle over and over and over again is that why would anyone try to come and prevent you from doing something if you're not hurting anyone else from in what you're doing? Then it, basically we are living under a tyranny, whether it's a tyranny of, by an individual or a tyranny of the majority. And I don't know. You ready to take Come some phone? Oh, yeah. People are calling. 